Hi, my name is Lisa. Welcome to Time Travel Tuesday. Our ancestors lived in an uncertain world. Many things that science has explained to us were total mysteries to people of the past. To deal with these uncertainties, they developed methods and behaviors that they believed would control the world around them. We call those superstitions. Here are 10 superstitions and how they came to be. Like many superstitions, knocking on wood goes back to pre-Christian times. Ancient Celts believed that there were spirits living in trees, and knocking on a tree, or something made from a tree, was believed to awaken the spirit inside and get their attention, either to provide protection or to grant wishes. The belief that breaking a mirror would bring seven years bad luck is a little more complex. The image in the mirror was once thought to be directly connected to reality. Damage to the mirror could damage real life. There's also the fact that in early times, and in certain parts of the world, anything made of glass might be difficult to replace. As for the seven-year time limit, seven was a number of some significance in many cultures, and seven years was just a really long time to have bad luck. Walking under a ladder is a more basic superstition. A ladder leaned against a wall forms a triangle. The three sides were taken to represent the Holy Trinity, and it was believed they should not be broken. More practically, if someone is working on the ladder and you walk under it, they may drop something on your head. So walking under a ladder could result in immediate bad luck. The origin of this one is a little vague. It's used in many cultures to either bring good luck or to ward off bad luck. And it could also be used to counteract a promise. One theory is that the crossed fingers were intended to invoke the cross of Christ. And it was a secret means of identification among early Christians. But the actual gesture doesn't look much like a cross, and it didn't start showing up as a good luck sign until way after the first century. In some cultures, particularly in Southeast Asia, this is actually a rude gesture, so be careful where you use it. Spilled salt was believed to be bad luck, unless you immediately threw a of it over your left shoulder. Salt was a valuable preservative and not to be wasted. Attaching a superstition to spilling it encouraged people to be extremely careful with it. Why the left shoulder? It was believed that the devil was on your left side. The salt may have been to blind him so that he couldn't get you while you were cleaning up. The Latin word for left is sinestra, which is where we get the English word sinister. Saying bless you when someone sneezes was once believed to either prevent the sneezer's soul from getting out or to keep evil from getting in. There are several origin stories for this superstition. It's said that when the bubonic plague was ravaging Europe, sneezing was one of the first symptoms. Pope Gregory I supposedly suggested that a prayer when someone sneezed might ward off the disease. An alternate belief is that sneezing pushes evil spirits out of your body, and they would now be looking for a new home. In that case, the blessing would not protect just the sneezer, but anyone around them who didn't care to be possessed. Some people believe that picking a four-leaf clover will cause fewer four-leaf clovers to grow, but most botanists agree that you'd have to systematically remove every four-leaf clover in a field to make an impact. So why are four-leaf clovers lucky? Ancient druids believed that even a three-leaf clover was lucky, and that carrying one with them allowed them to see evil spirits coming and get out of the way. By medieval times, children believed that four-leaf clovers could help you see fairies. The first written mention of Forty Clovers being lucky is from 1620. For some reason lost to history, black cats were often associated with witchcraft and could even be a witch in disguise. The witch could be spying on you, looking for an opportunity to do harm. If a black cat crosses your path, it was said you should find another way to get where you're going. While we know that black cats are not evil, the superstition makes it hard for black cats to find homes even today. But there is an Irish belief that a black cat on the front porch brings good luck to the household. So if you head out to your local shelter and adopt a black cat, you'll both be lucky. Legend has it that St. Dunstan, the patron saint of blacksmiths, once made a pair of shoes for the devil's cloven hooves. The process of nailing them on was so painful that the devil has avoided horseshoes ever since. A qualified barrier can shoe a horse completely pain-free, so St. Dunstan must have really been trying to annoy the devil. This horseshoe was found in our pasture here at Brattonsville. While our horses, Sonny and Pete, don't wear shoes, 
It may have been lost by one of the cavalry horses at a reenactment. It's certainly not very old. Horseshoes in the past were made of iron, which many cultures believe to repel evil or fairies or other magical creatures who might be up to no good. When a horseshoe hangs over a door, should it point up or down? Depends on who you ask. Some people believe that the points should go up to keep the luck from leaking out. Others think the points should go down so the good luck falls on anyone passing underneath. Perhaps you should put up one of each just in case. Finally, we come to the superstition of wishing on stars, whether it be the first star of the evening or a shooting star. Ptolemy, writing in ancient Greece about 140 AD, said that perhaps the gods were bored and checking to see what was happening with the humans down below. When they pulled aside the sky, stars fell out. So a shooting star would mean that the gods were looking our way and would hear our wishes. It's not clear when we started wishing on the first evening star. Maybe it was just easier to get your wishes heard that way. After all, shooting stars are very rare, but every clear evening has a first star. This is just a sampling of the thousands of superstitions our ancestors devised to explain or control the world around them. Let us know in the comments what some of your favorite superstitions are. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.